So Dave and me are about to route the binding channel on this harp guitar. So that's where we run it on this tool that has this um, router base on it. And we run that around the very edge. And I've got my um, space helmet on. So let's do it. to flip the harp guitar over and put it in the other um, holding form and um, then we'll route using the same flush cut bit um, on the headstock of the harp arm right there um, and that gets flush routed and then we'll do the binding channel around the whole thing so stay tuned for that here we go with the top um, harp head flush cut binding wrap So right where the uh, right where the tuner pocket is for the for the super super treble tuners, there's a piece of walnut there, and it has little bumps right here and here. So I have to um, I have to smooth those out and then re rebinding route that little spot there. But uh, this is what the binding channel looks like. Very slight little channel there. Shelf. Little shelf. Shelves. Make sure the depth is all right. Good. All right. Now it's time to put the binding in. Uh, the next thing I'll do is I'll have to finish these little channels in here to tuck the the binding into this uh, neck block area. All right. So next, I will be routing, uh, let me show you the binding channel a little bit better on this view. So you can see there's a little shelf there and the binding will get glued into there. So right here, 
we, we can't run the router bit all the way up in there, so um, I have to use a tiny little Dremel tool to get that last little bit of shelf in there, here and here. So I'll show you how that goes. First, I draw on there. Now I have two lines. Next, I take this uh, board and these clamps. And get my Dremel tool with an eighth inch bit. And I take it all the way down so it's not protruding out of the base. And I try to figure out a way to just have to eyeball this and try to cut along that line. That's looking pretty close there. I thought maybe uh, my friend Aaron was going to stop by today, but I don't know if he's going to make it or not. Okay, that's right. All the way down to there, that's about right. Usually put a couple marks on the top here, the height of the binding. Side locks it in place so this is the height of the binding right there and I already had that other bit set up for that so my ear protection back on <laughs> So there you have it. There are the two channels for the binding to tuck in there. And I will go get the mirror and check inside here for a break of the brace. All right, here are my two pieces of pre-bent walnut binding. Really nice uh, walnut stuff there. Black walnut. And uh, this, uh, here's the the harp arm side here and uh, then I've got the uh, treble side here with this extra long bit there I just make the two pieces of binding the same length and then I have this extra long piece for the inside harp arm so the inside harp arm is right there and yeah that binding fits right in there snug like a bug in a rug and so I can basically Break that one right off there for the time being. And this one will go around this edge here. Just change this around so you can see. This one will go here. And that wraps around way down here with plenty of room. To go past there, I usually go about a half inch past there, mark it off. 
And I come over here. And I use one of my little saws to snip that off there. Nice flat edge. Tripod isn't the greatest tripod. I'm gonna get another one out here one of these days. Okay, so that goes there, this goes here, and this is up here, and I can mark this off. Same trick. Slice that little guy off there. That will snug up right in there. I mark that so when I put that on it fits in here with the right amount of excess. So I guess technically I can start um, gluing this binding in. And then on this uh, harp side here, um, the harp side, that's where I, uh, I have to bend this little bit back around to fit in this section of the harp arm here, because the binding goes all the way up here past the purfling line, which is the separator between the walnut and the spruce right there. And uh, then it, it comes right out to the edge here. So the binding, the, the, the walnut binding meets the walnut headstock veneer and blends together, so it kind of, they kind of look nice together. So, anyway, I'll have to bend that later. Uh, so, but first, I'm gonna. I usually start with the inside harp arm because that's kind of the one of the easiest ones to do. So I'll go ahead and get that going. You guys can watch as I do that, if you so care to. Little shot of glue inside that little nook there, and then nice line. On there. Nice bit of uh, tight bond wood glue. Since we're doing wood binding on wood, then uh, we can just go ahead and use the tight bond. Some people like to use the uh, super glue or the cyanoacolate glue or whatever that stuff's called. I've always called it super glue. And uh, some people like that method. Um, I've done, done that a few times when we, whenever we have a some kind of an uh, inlay or a purfling. Sometimes we'll do the super glue. Binding job glue binding job but this seems to be a little more forgiving and if there's ever a little place that needs that has a gap in it you can just heat it up with a heating iron and and flex it back into place so it seems to work pretty good with the regular old wood glue alrighty so get my uh, binding tape here Really hope this tape sticks well. I've been having a little trouble. This is some dollar store. Um, this is the dollar store painters tape, blue painters tape, and I used to buy it by the dozen, and it was so good quality. It stuck really well, and it has a nice stretchiness to it, um, so it really holds the binding nicely. But um, the last time we bought it from the dollar store, it was a little bit different. It's it's. It looks the same, 
feels pretty close to the same, but it doesn't seem to like to hold on to the wood for long periods of time. So it'll sometimes just give up and let go of the wood, and then you wonder if it got enough cure time in that in that glue joint. So that's, I guess, what you get from the dollar store. Uh, inconsistency. So now I have to use extra long bits of the, of the tape, which wastes a little bit more of it in order to really stick it down. I think I have a couple rolls left of the original uh, purchase that we got from the dollar store. We bought probably a dozen rolls, and then we went back to there and bought some more. At a later time and it didn't seem to be quite as good but I still have some of the original and so that stuff seems to stick better I don't know what the deal was they changed something about it or some inconsistency with the factory that makes it but yeah it has just the right amount of stretchiness just the right amount of tack usually hopefully the next time I buy it they'll have had a new shipment and it be back to the old quality. You can hear Dave in there talking to himself. And I'm talking to myself too, or talking to my YouTube subscriber fans. Not fans, just subscribers. I subscribe to a lot of YouTube channels and I guess I would say I'm a fan of those channels to whatever degree. Certain channels I'm quite a big fan of, like uh, Will Stelter and Alex Steele, the blacksmiths. Um, other channels I'm a fan of for just for information purposes, I, or I'm a subscriber for information purposes, but not quite so much as of a fan of what they do. helps to have a good nice soaked wet rag when you're doing this to keep your fingers clean because these are very expensive glue spreaders right there best kind that money can buy Okay, so spread that around a little bit more. I like to scrape off some of that excess glue so it doesn't get in the way. All right, and I usually start by so far so good on this tape. I usually start at the tail here where my line is. Need some help there? Uh, I don't think so. Someone to wipe while wow. the main so problem I've been having is this is this uh, is this tape is not quite as consistent as I'd like it. Oh, it seem to uh, 
I don't really need to have it up on those blocks anymore. Yeah, you gotta stretch it just a little bit. This must be a roll from the original batch of tape. It seems to be sticking and not loosening up. Do you have some harp head black walnut stock anywhere handy around here? Harp head black walnut? Black walnut harp head stock that's just blanks. Uh, you mean birch plywood? No, the walnut, the head veneer. Harp head head veneer. Oh, no. What, what, do you mean the reverse head veneer? Oh, no, you mean for the front, this for, piece? For the front. Yeah, do you have any? Uh, yes, I do have a bunch of that. Ones? Yeah. Because I need to like do a inlay that one on on a match yeah, we'd be gluing my fingers together and, and you want to use a wet rag you want to use a dry rag to wipe the glue yeah a dry rag to wipe the glue off and then put a wet rag for your fingers yeah so you need both and last time this thing floated up there a little bit I don't know how it did that Rag on here, see how that works. I wish I could do a time lapse on the um, iMovie on my iPhone. Uh, you can. You can do time lapse. I don't know how to do that. I don't. It does. It has very limited editing oh. abilities on the iMovie. iMovie. Oh, iMovie. The, you have to the, make. The, you have to make phone. it with your. You have to make the time lapse with the camera app. Oh well, I should be time lapsing this one. Yeah. Well, you can uh, stop now. You can start now. Do it. Want me to switch it over? Let's switch it over. Okay. So here I am over at the bending station with this harp arm piece of binding, and I put a little mark on it. Right. Right there. It's a little arrow. Right there, and that from from that little mark, this way, needs to be bent, and so I bend it on this uh, cutaway bending jig. So I turn on this uh, flashing red, yellow, green, blue light over here, um, which keeps this circuit on a timer, so we don't burn the shop down with the heat blankets. Many a luthier shop have gone up in smoke from these bending jigs and heat blankets. So, I like to put on a couple of gloves when I do this because these things get hot. Of course, you gotta turn them on. Variable. I suppose we should put a fire suppression system in here somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> that probably wouldn't be a bad idea. So slowly getting hot here. We'd have to install a water tower to do that, though. We don't have, we don't have enough water pressure here to like make no, an adequate system. Probably not. We'll just have to keep hoping and praying. <laughs> yeah. We could have like some like spray nozzles installed, though, that just we can, can shoot whatever pressure there is out. That's the thing: is your your water source has to be like fireproof. So now I'm just putting some pressure on this thing. As I bend this little section here over here. this little cutaway mold. It doesn't usually take very long. Yeah, this that. heats up Don't quite hot. Mm -hmm. You just can't go too fast with it. You can sort of feel it when it starts to bend. Then when it's done bending, I just, just getting close here. 
You hold it on there, right? I hold it on there and then I put a clamp on it. Oh, what? What are you doing? Messing around with my stuff here? Sorry. <laughs> twist down, let me get it back on. Okay, I'm about to put this clamp on here. Which is now bent all the way. Yeah, that tripod is a <laughs> piece of junk. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and go mobile with this thing. So now you can see how I've put this piece of binding over top of this bending jig, and it it's, doesn't have to be an exact fit on this one. Oh, you clamp it on there. Yeah, I like to clamp it on there, let it heat up, and dry the piece completely out. Then I turn this off from variable to off, and then this is the dial that adjusts the variable temperature. Uh oh. Lost your clamp. Lost my clamp. I'll have to jig that back. Okay, so I'm back. Uh, this cooled off for a few minutes there. I got it clamped back up on there after it fell off. And uh, it doesn't need to be bent too tightly, but um, anyway, that piece goes right here. So I will feed this through this clamp here, and that piece goes right about here and fits nicely in there, and then goes down to the waist here. And got to clamp this in here and bring this around here, draw a little line way back here. And yeah, this should fit on nicely. Usually once that gets clamped for a few minutes, it's, uh, it stays glued there. So I'm going to cut this off real quick. Just like so. And that goes back here. Cuts up completely flush. I don't seem to need to sand that very much after it's done there. Boy, that's... Quite enough on there. That's interesting. Thought I had that right in the uh, center of that waste spot there. But... Oh well, it'll be clamped in there. Should be okay. Oh, boy, that's. Be a little bit off there, but anyway, I will go ahead and time lapse.